Are you ready to dive into Notion but feeling overwhelmed by all the features? Don't worry, you're not alone. I'll show you how to get started in Notion. I'll walk through all the Notion features that you need to know and how Notion is structured as it is very different from the other platforms. I've read the comments, Notion is overwhelming, Notion has a steep learning curve, etc. Today, my goal is to help you finally understand Notion. Chapter one, pages and documents. Now, documents in here are kind of like Word documents. On the side here, we have this panel. This panel here is kind of the settings and the foldering structure of your Notion account. So this is my productive setups account. It's not my personal account. So you can see in here, I have the premium templates, which I make, free templates, which I make, build tutorials, which I record, and some other backup stuff here. So what you need to understand is Notion actually looks at documents and structuring very different from a normal Google suite or just Microsoft account. These here are pages and we can create a new page. So under private here, I'm just going to click on add a page. I've now created a new page as you can see. So I'm just going to write blah. So that is the title here. But for me to create another folder, I don't actually have to click here on the side. I can create a folder on this line here. So to do that, all I have to do is command and then click on page. So I'll just call this blah, blah. And then what I'll do is navigate up here to go back. As you can see, the page is sitting in here. So it's not your typical folder system, which you would be used to. Every single line here, all of these here, have the ability to become a page. And what I can do is drag this around just like you would drag a document around from a folder. So I can now drag this onto the main side panel here. And now you can see blah, blah sitting there. I'll just close this. So Notion have really changed the way we look at folders and they are really no longer a thing in here, which at first takes some time getting used to creating pages and realizing that pages, so let's call this one, can have pages inside them which can have pages inside them and so forth. Just like a folder can have folders inside it, we can have documents with documents inside it. Now I'll just delete that. Now that you understand how the Notion structure works, let's talk about commands. So as you saw before, there are some simple commands that we can use. First, we'll talk about text-based commands in Notion. And this is another thing that really sets Notion apart, all of these different commands here. So just like a Word document, you can write text, blah, 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 on a line. In Notion, you can use commands on lines as well, such as creating a page like we looked at. So let's go through some text-based commands. We have text, which is this, blah, blah, blah. Then we have page, which we looked at. Then we could create a to-do list. So this is what most people do who are starting in Notion. You can do task one, task two and you can tick these off like that. The next thing we have here in text-based commands is different headers. So you have heading one, heading two, heading three. So if you've used Word or Google Docs, they have headers in there, or maybe if you're a website designer, you're used to heading one, two, and three. So here we can have these, and they dictate the size of the text, header one, header two, header three. Now this isn't just for the text size, we can actually use this for blocks, which I'll get to later as it's a bit more advanced. The next thing we have here in text-based commands is a bullet list and a number list. So bullet list is just like it sounds, you can write bullets here. And then a number list is just like it sounds, you can write numbers. These are just some basic text-based commands. Now, if you've never used Notion before, you might be thinking this is all very basic stuff. Why wouldn't I use Word? You're going to see as we keep going the power of all of these different commands. Another text-based command here we have is quote. I actually never use this to be honest, but you can write a quote here and it looks like that. And then we have half the reason that people will join Notion, you can use emojis. So all you have to do for that is do a colon and then I can write smile. And then I'm going to see all of the different emojis to do with smiles. There we go, tree, there we go. And these can go absolutely anywhere. So I could place this after a header tree and adding emojis in the right place can be very useful when designing a page just to make it intuitive to use. All right, so let's go through page settings in Notion. This here is the name of the page. So as you can see, it says new page here, and I can call this obviously whatever I want. And I'll call it blah because I'm very creative. And then we can click on add icon here and it will generate a random icon. Now you have three options for icons. You can use icons and there is a bunch of default icons here, which are all great. Or you can upload a custom icon. So you can literally upload your own image or you can even link to an image online. But honestly, you won't have to use custom too often because icons and emojis here have everything that you could need. So I will select this target icon and now I have an icon for the page. This icon here isn't just showing up on this page though. 
So if I open up the side panel again, I can now see this page here, blah, with that icon there. And any time I see this page in any context, it's going to show me this icon. That way it's going to help me navigate and understand what page this is very quickly. Just how an app design would use icons, you want your documents to use icons. It's useful to have each document represented by its own emoji or icon. And then lastly, for the page settings, we can add a cover. So if you click on add cover here, it will randomly generate an image. And if I click on change cover here, it will give me four options. I have a gallery of just default images here. So there's just a bunch of default ones here to choose from. You can upload an image. So this would be your own image, your own design, something like that. You could link to another image online that you found, or you can use Unsplash. If you haven't used Unsplash before, it's a free library of images. So I'll search for sky and click on this one here, for example. And now I have this banner here at the top of my page. All right, let's quickly talk about text editing. If I write some text, I'll write blah, and then select this, it allows me to edit this text. I can do a few things which I won't talk about because they're a bit complicated. We can use AI and we can leave comments for other people, but it also allows me to edit this text, such as making it bold, making it italic, underlining, doing a strike through, or even changing it into code. You can also link this text. So if I click on add link here, I can either link to another page or I can add a link here to any URL online. And lastly, I can change the color. So I can either change the text color. So I'll make this orange. As you can see, the text is now orange. Or what I can do is change the background color. So I'll just make it yellow. And as you can see, the background of the text is now yellow. Okay, now let's dive into layout based commands. So again, I will do the forward slash button and then here we have our first layout based command. It is a table. So tables in Notion, you might have heard of them before. There are two types of tables. We have standard tables like this and we have databases. Now databases can be a bit more confusing, but this here is just a standard table like you would have in a Word or a Google document. So you can fill out these cells with text as per usual. And these six dots here, if you click them, you can actually add a header row. So now you can see it's just a slightly darker gray. And if I write a word here and click on this here, I can also change the color of the row. So here I could say, I want this row to be yellow, for example. And by using these six dots here, I can simply drag this up and down and easily add more rows like this or more columns like this. And of course, if I want to move a column, I can simply drag it like this. So this is a very basic table system. You might use it for timetables and stuff like that. But if you want to work with data, then this is not what you will be using. You would be using a database, which is forward slash data. And then here you can see a bunch of options we won't talk about right now. It's just a bit more advanced. Then another layout based command is the toggle. So here you can see a toggle list. This is really, really useful to use. So if I write colors, then in here I can say blue, yellow, red, and I can simply close and open this toggle here. This can be really useful just for structuring your page so you don't have to see all text at all times. Now, like we've been talking about, each line in Notion doesn't mean it just has to be text there. It can be anything. So what you could do, for example, is drag this table into this toggle. So now I have this table here inside of this toggle. And of course I can drag it out. So all I'm doing here is grabbing the item, no matter what it is, if it's this tree emoji, for example, I can grab the item as well. And to do that, I'm just using the six dots here next to the item. So for example, if I wanted to create a toggle up here, I could do forward slash and click on toggle and I could drag a header one in here. Now, if I open the toggle, I can see that header one there. The next layout based command is to do forward slash div. This means divider. It's just a simple divider line, which is really useful to have. So when you're using the command action, doing the forward slash, you can scroll here or you can simply start typing. So if I type div, the divider comes up. So I don't have to scroll up and down this list. I can simply type what I'm after. So forward slash page and now I can see page here, which just makes working with Notion a lot faster. Then the next useful layout based command is to link to a page. So what you can do here is literally link to another page. So imagine a foldering system on your computer and you have a document so what you can do inside that document is link to another document. If I want here, I can link to the blah blah page we created before. And now it is sitting here so I can click on blah blah and literally open up that page there. This can be really useful for quick access to pages. Now let's talk about background colors. So just like we added a color into a row here on this table, we can add background colors on any of these lines. So if I click on these six dots here, you can see here color. 
and here it can give me a background color or I can change the text color. So I can make this text here yellow as you can see, or if I click on these six dots here and change the color, I can change the background and let's make that yellow. So now I have a background color on this line. So I am adding the color to the individual lines. And this can be useful when trying to make your Notion aesthetic or simply to make it easy to navigate. All right, let's jump into the next chapter, media based commands. So if I do the forward slash once again, then here you can see we have media. So I can embed an image in here, just like you would add an image to a Word document, but unlike Word, it doesn't completely stuff up the page. And what I can do here is upload, embed, use Unsplash or search Giphy. By the way, if you are looking to upload images that are larger than five megabyte, then you have to have a plus account. Most likely your images won't be that large, but that is something to bear in mind. Then the next media based command here that we have is embedding a video. So you can embed a video from YouTube or Vimeo, for example. I do this with useful tutorials that I want to access very often. So maybe you can try it out with this video that you're watching. Then you can also embed an audio. You can do this from SoundCloud. You can do this from Spotify. You can even upload your own audio files. I found this to be quite useful for SOPs. If you don't know what an SOP is, it's basically a standard operating procedure, which can be useful when you're outsourcing tasks. And then lastly here, you can upload any file. So this would be kind of like using a Dropbox alternative. Now, bear in mind, if you are uploading heavy files, once again, you do have a limit of five megabytes. Anything more than that, you'll need a plus account. In my personal account, I do have a plus account and I find it really, really useful. All right, let's dive into the next chapter about page layouts. So on Notion here, this is one of our pages. What you can do is click on the three dots here in the corner and you could change a few different settings. Now we won't go through everything here as it's quite self-explanatory, but it's quite useful. You can change the font here from the default to serif, which is a very popular font, or you can change it to mono, which I don't think a single person has ever done. So let's change it to serif and join the trend. You can also make the text smaller by default. So here you can see blah, blah, blah. If I click small text, as you can see, it just got slightly smaller. And the thing that I find the most useful is the full width feature. So right now, as you can see, there is quite a bit of room on the sides here. If I click on full width, that is removed. So now it is taking up the full page. Now this really depends on each page and what you can do in Notion is have every single page different if you want it full width or not, which is a really useful setting to have. Quick tip, you can also see the page's word count down here. Now, because we have the full width setting, this here is quite wide. Now what we can do in Notion is actually use columns. So to do that, what I'll do is forward slash and write column. And here you can see I can choose to do two columns, three columns, four columns, five columns, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Just to show you so it's a bit more obvious, I'll change the background color here to yellow, change this one to yellow, and this one to yellow as well. So now we have three columns here. And because Notion doesn't use text, it uses lines, what you can do here is drag this into that line. So as you see, that blue line here indicates that I'm dragging it into that column. So it's now added that into this column. I can add this header three into this one. I can add the dot point into this one. You can change the order of stuff in a column, just like you would do in a normal text line here. We just have the functionality here of having columns. This is really, really useful. And typically what I've seen people do, even though I don't recommend it, but people often do, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, blah, blah, blah. And we'll make a week like this with a to-do list. Yes, this would be easy for beginners, but it's just not very powerful. I have a tutorial on how to create a dashboard that is effective, that doesn't use databases, but is more powerful than this. I have a link in the description if you wanna check that out. All right, let's dive into the next functionality, blocks. So I'll do forward slash as per usual, and then scroll down here until I can see the table of contents. So this here is advanced blocks. So table of contents will show me all of the different headers that I have on this page. So what I'll do is drag this up here, put that at the top, that makes sense. Also, what I'll do is change this back to normal size text, just so it's easier for us to read. And here I have these different headers that we created. So header one, header three, and header two. So this can be useful for me to navigate. And what I can do is even click on these and it will scroll down to that specific section. The next command block that we have is breadcrumbs. So if I click on breadcrumb here, it will show me the pages that this page is inside. So right now this page isn't sitting anywhere. But to show you how it works, what I'll do is drag this blah page into my build tutorials. So I'll drag this into build tutorials. And now you can see the breadcrumb has automatically changed. Blah is sitting inside of my build tutorials page. And these aren't simply text. As you can see, if I hover over them, 
they are literally buttons so I can click here and come to my build tutorials dashboard. The next command block is a sync block. Now sync blocks are really, really powerful. It's basically anything that you put in this little box here will be shown elsewhere. So if I write hello, hello here, and now what I'm going to do is copy and sync. So it's copying this block here for me. And I'll just scroll up to the top, make some space, and I will simply paste, so command V. Now I can see hello, hello. So this hello, hello, and this hello, hello is the same thing. So if I write hello, hello, hello in this block now and scroll down, I can see hello, hello, hello here. So it is the same thing being shown twice. And like I've said, Notion is not working with text. It is working with lines. If I drag something like this page here, the blah, blah page, if I drag that in here and scroll up, I can see that blah, blah sitting in here as well. So whatever I put in here, I can put absolutely anything in here and it will be shown to me here and in the other place. If you're struggling with a very long to-do list and you want to create a workflow that you know what to do every single day where you can stress less but get better results, then check out my Notion course linked in the description. Now let's look at sharing. So up here you can see share. Now what I can do here is share in two different ways. So I can either share to specific people, so I could write someone's email in here, or I can publish this page. If I publish this page, it's like creating a website and people will have a link to it. You can also then create a template from your page and then share that template so others can duplicate it. You've probably seen people sell Notion templates. I have quite a few free ones and a few premium ones. And this share functionality up here is how people do that. All right, let's talk about embedding and widgets. So if you do forward slash as per usual to access the commands, if we scroll down here, you can see uh, we have to scroll quite far down because it is very low in the list. But here we can see the stuff we can embed and there is a lot of options. You can embed from Google Drive, you can embed a tweet, a GitHub, Google Maps, Figma, Abstract, and the list goes on. There is so much stuff here and Notion is constantly adding more ones. Another thing you've probably seen is people embed weather widgets. Don't do this, it serves as a distraction, it's not practical and it's not helping you to work more quickly. From a guy whose entire channel is practically about Notion, this might sound weird to say, but your goal is to spend the least amount of time in Notion as possible. Notion is simply a tool to help you work quickly. Yes, Notion is more complicated than a standard Word document, but this new structuring system and the commands we've been looking at helps us to work more efficiently. Now there are three more ways that we can work quickly in Notion. The first one here is buttons. So buttons are a bit more advanced, but what this allows us to do is set a rule that when we click on this button, we can have it perform an action for us. So if I click on add action here, we can ask it to insert blocks. It could add pages to other documents or databases. It can open up pages. It is a very useful tool to have. In my Notion productivity template, it lets me easily add a task, easily take a note and easily add a resource. What would normally take me a while because I have to, you know, scroll to the right page and then scroll to the bottom of the page and then try to find where that note or resource or task is going to fit in. I can now just do it by clicking on a button. The next thing to speed up the way you work in Notion is to use shortcuts. So here are my four favorites. Number one, if you hold down option, you can simply duplicate anything. So right now I duplicated this toggle. We can duplicate this entire table. You can just duplicate anything by holding down the option key. The next thing is creating bullets. Instead of doing forward slash scrolling down and looking for bullet, all you have to do is dash space and now you have a list. And the same idea goes for number lists. I just have to click one dot and now I have a numbered list. To create a toggle quickly, all I have to do is this icon, whatever that's called, and then spacebar. And now I have a toggle. If your workflow involves a lot of toggles, that's a really useful hack. And lastly, and this is actually one of my favorite things about Notion, if you do control A in a Word document, you select the entire document. In Notion, when you do control A, you actually only select that line. And it's a really useful feature. So when I'm working fast and I want to select all of this stuff, I can just do A. Now you might be saying that's kind of annoying. What if I want to select absolutely everything? Well, you can, you'll just do control A on a blank line. And now it selects absolutely everything. So now you know the fundamentals of Notion, but to get the most out of this software, you'll want to use databases. This video here is a full tutorial on databases, or if you just want an all-in-one solution so you don't have to build your Notion setup yourself, then click on this video here for my template that I mentioned. Thanks so much for watching.